Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, first history is confusing. Just done a few more star forts. This time I found a few interesting ones in the United States, and of course my computer's frozen. Gee. Okay, so we got Castillo de San Marcos is the oldest and largest masonry fort in the content continental United States. It's located in the western shore of the Mountains Bay in the city of St. Augustine, Florida. The Castillo was designed by Spanish engineer Ignacio Daza with construction beginning in 1672, 107 years after the city's founding by the Spanish Admiral um, when Florida was part of the Spanish Empire. The fort's construction was ordered by Governor Francisco de Larry Garcia de la Vega after raided by English privateer Robert Searles in 1668 that destroyed much of St. Augustine and damaged the existing wooden fort. Work proceeded under the administration of Guerrilla's successor. Um, in 1671, the first uh, Conquilla stones were laid in 1672. Construction of the core of the f current fortress was completed in 1697, though it undergo many alterations and renovations. When Britain gained control of Florida in 1673, pursuit of the Treaty of Paris, St. Augustine became the capital of the British East Florida. Yes, yeah, see, I thought um, Florida was owned by the French. Um, so the fort was renamed Fort St. Mark. Um, until the Peace of Paris in 1783, when Florida was transferred back to Spain and the fort's original name was restored. Um, um, Spain signed the adams Onis Treaty, which ceded Florida to the United States in 17, 1821. Consequently, the fort was designated United States Army Base and renamed Fort Marion in honor of the American Revolutionary War hero Francis Marion. The fort was declared a national monument in 1924 and after 251 years continuous military possession was deactivated in 1933. The 20.48 acre or 8.29 hectare site was subsequently turned over to the United States Park Service. Um, in 1942 the original name was restored by an act of Congress. The fort was attacked several times and twice besieged, first by English colonial forts led by the Carolina colony and then by English Georgia colonial governor in 1714, but was never taken by force. However, possession of the fort changed six times, all peaceful. Under the United States control, the fort was used as a military prison to incarcerate members of Native American tribes starting with the Seminole, including the famous war chief, I can't say that name, sorry, and then the Second War, and members of the Western tribes, including Geronimo's band, this guy, and the Native American art form known as Ledge Art, had its origins at the fort during the imprisonment of the member of the Plains tribes, such as Howling Wolf and the Southern Cheyenne transferred to the Park Service in 1933 has been popular tourist destinations since. Aerial photo with the dry... It was originally a dry moat. I doubt that it was originally a dry moat. Construction plan of the fort in 1667. So it was founded in, the city was founded in 1565. Need for fortifications recognized after attack by Sir Francis Drake's so fleet of 22 ships in 1586 and for the next 80 years. A succession of nine wooden forts were built in various locations along the coastline. However, after the attack by the English pirate Robert Searle, during which the town of Sago Augustine was burned to the ground, wooden forts were deemed inadequate. Queen of Spain approved construction of a masonry fort to protect the city. It's a masonry star fort. Um, consists of ancient shells that have been bonded together 
to form sedimentary rocks similar to limestone. Uh, Native Americans from Spain's nearby missions did most of the labour, with additional skilled workers bought from Havana, Cuba. See, they've got additional skilled workers. You have to have skills to do this. You can't just have prisoners that have no... can't read or write or, or, or no intellect. The fort has four bastions named San Pedro, San Augustin, San Carlos and San Pablo, with a ravelin protecting the sally port. Sally Port is a secure, controlled entryway to a fortification or prison. The entrance is usually protected by some means, such as a fixed wall on the outside parallel to the door, which must be circumvented to enter and prevents direct enemy fire from a distance. It may include two sets of doors. I'll leave links up in the description for you guys. Very well put together. Look at that crack there. Something's hit it with some force. What happens if these cannons were like a sound weapon that didn't shoot out cannonballs, but actually shot out, um, like what you'd get a, from a shockwave from a bomb? What happens if they did that instead of firing out metal balls that just take 10, 15 minutes to pack each one? Uh, hot furnace used to heat the cannonballs. Yeah, right. Okay. So this is a layout, and this is obviously on top of it. It's obviously got tunnels underneath it too. Clarity on this picture. So this is Saint Augustine up in here, and here's the fort here. And so as one of my other subscribers commented the other day, they all seem to be the same sort of design, the same shape all over the world. How is it possible? And how is it possible with the cost of these, when all these wars were happening, or were they running around finding all the gold and all the jewellery and that, that was left over from the previous set of civilization and used that, did they? I'm sure if I looked through the map, I would find more along this coastline that are closer together. It's hard to find them in the United States because they're all under the different categories of the state that they're in. This one here is um, Fort Morgan in Alabama, and I'm not sure if it's undergoing renovations or whatnot, but it's, it's had a bit of a 
lately, but it looks like it's been covered up fully at some stage. Okay, so here's another one here I didn't notice until just now. I had a look on the map and it's directly across from the one I just showed. So I'll zoom in and see what we can see. Computer's been really slow today, sorry. This one will be directly across. If you're ever looking at these on the map, always have a look close by and you'll find, you pretty much find one that's close by all the time. Um, Fort Lookout, also known as Redoubt A, is a defensive earthwork erected during the American Civil War on the outskirts of Camden, Arkansas. It's the northmost in a series of five redoubts built in a defense in the city by the Confederate Army forces in the early 1864 preparatory for the Union's Army Camden's Expedition March to May 1864. Sites being designated as National Historic Landmark as parts of the Camden Exhibition Sites, a collection of military sites related to the expedition. Fort Lookout is a rectangular earthwork located on a bluff 50 feet overlooking a bend on the Ochoa River. Immediately west of the main works is an L-shaped redoubt with commands potential fording sites at the base of the bluff. Each of these sites was capable of mounting at least six guns of the period. The site is located about one mile west of the United States Route 79 of Gravel Pit Road. The main earthworks has been pro partially compromised by the construction of a home near its midsection. The rest of the site has been reverted to a forest and otherwise in good condition. Remnant trenches lead away from the main works along the ridge to the east. Brigadier General Alexander T. Hawthorne, our cannonaded, had been given the task of organizing the city's defense from January to March Confederate troops and slave labour worked to develop a series of five redoubts, mainly to protect the southern and western land-based approaches of the cities. Um, so I think it's just using the Civil War as an excuse for all of these here. So this is where the area is of Fort Lookout or Fort Sutherland, as, as a, there's two names and it goes on. Um, it's hard to see at the moment because of the river and my computer is not loading too well. But if you put the names up in the Google uh, search bar. Uh, this one's Fort Sutherland, which was just um, part of the readout A that we just checked out that's covered in forest. Um, it's on the outskirts with the other one. It's over Earthworks. Part of the National Historic Landmark. It's um, the southmost of a chain of fire redoubts built by the Confederate Forts to save labor. The same description as the other one we just had. So, not much difference. Fort Marshall was a historic American coastal four point bastion f uh, fort located in what is now. The highland town of Canton, uh, neighborhoods of Baltimore, Maryland. It was built at the outset of the Civil American War in 1861 to protect the eastern approaches of Baltimore from the Confederate attacks. The fort remained a garrison for the event during the war. After 1866, the fort's buildings were salvaged for other purposes. And. Oh, I'm sorry. It's moved. Sorry. My computer's running really weird today. And ultimately become the site, oh my goodness, of Sacred Hill for Jesus Roman Catholic Church, uh, surrounded by the developing race, residential neighborhoods. So if these forts do have tunnels or an entry into another part of the earth and they build a church on it, is that just still hiding it? After hostilities broke out between the United States and the Confederacy in 1861, Lieutenant Henry 
Bruton and the Union Army was charged in August of that year with strengthening the defences of Baltimore. The extent Fort McHenry and Fort Carroll were formed, found to be dilapidated and inadequate to the city's protection. Bruton launched the refurbishment of these fortifications and established many new forts, such as Federal Hill and Worthington. Now, these red ones are, there's just nothing on them. Lines of elaborate barricades on every approach to the city and homes fortified to the occupants of riflemen and sharpshooters demonstrated the military's commitment to holding all the cities at all costs, or at least denying it to the Confederates. Fort Marshall was considered one of Baltimore's most important defences during the war. Strong earthworks fortifications were positioned near the centre of the city. There it protected the east flank of the city along with nearby Fort Worthington from the threat of the Confederate raids or invasion. Fort Marshall also shielded the Union Military Hospital nearby Patterson Park half a mile to the west. In addition, as the riots of April 1861 have proven, Baltimore itself was hardly a bastion of Union sympathizers. Okay. The defences of Fort Marshall were never seriously called upon during the war. By late 1864, the site was primarily used only as a hospital. Um, they noted the dilapidated nature that was in May of that year. In November 1865, the Civil War now over, Captain Price Craig Hill was placed on the replacement for Lieutenant Colin Bruton, set about making up keeping repairs at Fort Marshall, which remained a military installation. Half a year later, the plans had changed, um, and the stocks of the fort would be sold at cash auctions. Oh, wow, including nearly 3,000 kegs of rifle powder. 10,000 cartridges of cannon powder and as many gun cartridges and chassis. Four days after the auction, the Ordnance Sergeant and Quartermaster themselves were either resigned or discharged. By July, even the fort's buildings were being sold off as firewood. Much of the building's lumber was sav savaged by the Freedmen's Bureau, which used the material from Marshall and nearby Hicks, U.S., Army General Hospital contained to construct more than 60 new schoolhouses. The fort was so thoroughly dismantled that in 1869 an account described its outline on the horizon as but a mark as the times go by where the cows and goats now pasteurise on its green bastions and its paparets. The final abandonment of the site by the federal government had cleared the way to begin redevelopment as a residential district, district, which began around 1870, become known as Highland Town. So, a little glass of Fort Marshall, 1862. So basically, it was just all stripped and sold off to the highest bidder. Which I'm thinking after this mud flood event is what they were doing just running around and grabbing what valuables and everything else they could find. Apologize for my laptop running slow today as well. I think I need to do a drive cleanup. So this is the uh, Fort, Fort McHenry. Now I'm pretty sure it was, um, I've done a video on it. Fort McHenry is where the Star Spangled Banner song come from. The United States Anthem. This is Fort Marshall, Baltimore, Maryland, 1863. 